Hi everybody, welcome back to my kitchen here at Little Spoon Farm. I've been in the kitchen making some blueberry pie filling so that I can can it up for the winter. And so I decided I'd go ahead and show you how to make a pie crust with your sourdough starter discard. So if you're interested, stay tuned and let's go ahead and get started. All right, so to a bowl, I'm gonna add a cup of flour, which is 125 grams. And I like to weigh everything out, especially when you're working with um, doughs because the hydration, depending on your, the hydration of your starter, it can change the ratios of the liquid that you're gonna need in here. This is a 100% hydration starter, which means it's equal parts flour and water. And I used this when I came up with the ratios of how much liquid to add versus how much flour. Okay, so you wanna make sure this is cold and you wanna make sure that your butter is cold. All right, so to this, I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of sugar. Okay. Then I like to take a fork, just kind of mix those up together in the bowl. All right, now once I have that measured out, let me put my scale to the side. And we're going to cut this butter in with the flour. And here's how I like to do it. You can do this all kinds of different ways, but I find that a cheese grater, the large holes of a cheese grater, are the perfect way to make pie crust. Takes about a minute, maybe not even that, to go ahead and just grate this in here. And it's gonna make these fine little shreds of butter. And I'll show you how we cut that in after I get this all grated in. Now look, see how quickly that took? Then I don't have to get my food presser, processor out and get another bowl dirty. This just does it all right here. So, get the rest of that grated in. Be careful with your fingers, of course. Just the last little bit. It also helps to keep the butter cold because it's not in a really warm, you know, the heat from the food processor. So these steps all help to keep that butter from, from warming up. So I'm gonna take the fork again and I'm just gonna toss the butter to kind of coat it with the flour and make sure that those stay kind of separated from each other. And right now, just kind of, it's really chunky. Now, normally I would be making two, this is one pie crust. So normally I would be making this in a much larger bowl. Unfortunately, that bowl broke. So um, I say that because normally I would use a bench scraper to just cut this butter and flour together but this bowl is just not big enough for this. So you can use uh, two forks or you can just use a pastry cutter. And what we're trying to do is cut this flour and butter together until there's just really large crumbles. Use a fork to scrape the uh, pastry cutter every once in a while. Do not use your finger. I learned that the hard way. Okay, it hurts. I cut my finger on a pastry cutter a long time ago. So, just a little advice there. All right, and once this is all nice and you got these really pretty big chunks of butter with the flour, you can see how that looks. And again, this butter is still really cold because we haven't handled it very much. Okay, now I need to get my scale back. And this is kind of important because this is where the 
uh, the hydration of your starter comes in and why that's important because this needs a certain amount of water we don't want it to be too wet or too dry so I measure out exactly a half a cup which is 125 grams of starter into the bowl I have to be very careful so I don't want to put too much I want it to be 125 exactly and that's it okay well, let me put this aside really quickly I'm also going to add a teaspoon of vinegar I love vinegar in my pie crust it helps it to be a little bit more flaky and tender so again that liquid has been taken into account Move all this away. And now I'm just going to stir this until I really just can't stir it anymore. And it's going to be really super, super chunky. Okay. It's going to look like it's not going to come together. I'm going to bring you in close so that you can see this a little bit better close up. Okay. So it looks pretty dry and crumbly, but do not worry because you're going to take your hands and you're going to start pressing it and kind of squeezing it together, okay? And you want to avoid overworking the dough, so I'm kind of working very quickly. But you can see that all of those little dry bits are getting absorbed into the dough. So you can see that didn't really take very long. Okay, now I'll have some press and seal, so that's what I'm using. I'm gonna shape this kind of into a disc and I'm gonna use the plastic to kind of help compress it okay into that disc shape okay now one of the things that I like to do after I have it there is I take a rolling pin and I just flatten it out you can see it's starting to shape more like a rectangle so I just kind of twist it like that and this is going to help smooth these edges out where there's those cracks okay so that way when we go to roll it out you'll have a little bit less cracking okay so you're going to put this in the fridge for at least two hours or up to four days. You want to let it chill before you roll it out. So that's pretty much it. That's it. I'll show you how I roll it out. So take the disc out of the refrigerator about 10 or 15 minutes before you want to roll it and then lightly flour your work surface and flour the top of that disc and I like to start on the at the center of the dough and roll towards the edges and then I turn that dough uh, every couple of times that I, I roll it just to make sure that that surface is being evenly rolled out and don't be afraid to add flour if you find it sticking to the work surface or your rolling pin. Now for this pie I'm using a double crusted pie and you can see how I took that rolling pin and used it to help transfer that top crust. So at this point you're going to bake your pie according to your pie's directions. This is a blueberry pie that I'm making so I just like to fold those edges under themselves around the edge of the 
the pie plate and then I just use my fingers to flute the edges. Another thing that I like to do when I bake pies is to give it a little light brushing of an egg wash. And of course you wanna make some slits in the top so that it can vent while it's baking. And that's it, you just bake it according to your pie's directions. Thank you for stopping by. I really hope you enjoy this recipe. And as always, there's a link to a printable recipe card in the description box below. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more simple recipes. Until next time, bye.